there lovely floss tubers welcome back to my channel uh, or welcome to my channel if you're a first time viewer uh, my name is Belushi Stitches and uh, today it's that day again oh no it's an unboxing <laughs> what a surprise uh, it's another unboxing it's ridiculous um, and also I'm going to show you my current whip uh, which I thought I would I would show you all uh, in the absence of a proper a proper whip update uh, non unboxing I thought I'd put put a couple of these bits in together um, so yeah a uh, bit of an unboxing and a whip day today so just to say also I am on uh, Instagram as Belushi stitches and uh, on my Instagram I will post daily updates uh, before I go to bed of how much I've stitched that day or worst case scenario, like uh, like yesterday, I had to post three days in a row um, just to show you guys where I'm up to. So uh, yeah, if, if you want to follow, follow uh, my kind of current projects, how I'm getting on, then please follow me on Instagram. Uh, I will at some point, I know I say this in every video, I'm sorry, uh, I will at some point get in front of the camera um, and actually show you guys what I've been working on. And what I've finished previously and uh, my many many patterns going forward that I want to stitch though I don't think I'll be alive long enough because there are so many patterns to do anyway um, so yeah so this is uh, an unboxing uh, I've managed to not open this it's been sat in my kitchen for a couple of hours um, and as you can see I got that far and then realized no stop it just wait wait until you can get your camera ready so I've now set up my camera I'm now ready to go and ready to show you this so I'll stop talking while I undo this because it's quite crinkly um, but uh, yeah so there's a couple of a couple of bits and pieces in here today this is very very exciting okay let's go let's go yeah this is A much bigger package than than usual. Anything else? No. Empty bag. Excellent bag. So here we are. Oh, things have flown around. Oh, it's really exciting. Okay. So what have we got? Okay. So here we are. So we've got a couple of bits and pieces. This is the. Uh, this is my Robin. Oh, let me stand up. This is my Robin kit. So it's a Lorna Lane kit, uh, charted and kitted up by uh, Gekka Roo, so the design is by Lorna Lane. And uh, it's of the Robin. It's just something that's called to me for a while, and I thought, oh, I just, I just, I just must. I think I'm going to have to do it. So I am denied for quite a while, but eventually gave, gave in, as I think we do. Uh, so let's have a look. Yeah, the colours are really bright through the camera, so that's good. You can see. You can see. Okay, so on previous kits before this one, you probably would have seen that I have been stitching on 18 count. It's always been, apart from a couple of pieces I've done throughout the years, it's always been my go-to um, choice of fabric. However, in the last, I don't know, maybe three, four weeks, I have been working on a piece on 25 count, and I've been working tent stitch, which I've never, I've never used 25 count, and I've never used tent stitch before. So it's all been rather new. Uh, so this is what I've decided, um, I decided to buy these two kits on 25 count and I'm going to try probably one of them, um, one over one full cross and the other one uh, pro maybe 10, I don't know. I'm going to see how the current piece that I'm working on comes out when it's finished and whether I'm happy with, with how it looks. Um, it's so quick stitching on, stitching tent or half stitch, tent stitch. It's so quick that... Um, I realise I might actually get through a few more of these in my lifetime. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to see how it goes. But either way, I've gone for the 25 count, um, and just gonna just gonna give it a try, see what happens. So this is the Robin kit, and I'll just get the the card here. There we go. Yeah, and I haven't done one for ages where you're going outside of the main grid. That's really, I like that. And obviously it's going to be the white background. This this background then is is not stitched. So it's really, I think it's really pretty. So I went for the, yeah, 25 count. 
um, 74 colours and, and here they are. Here they are. Yeah, they're super bright. Let's turn it around the proper way. Super bright. It's quite a few small bits of each colour. I think obviously when you're going for the 25 then it's a smaller fabric you'll be stitching on, smaller stitched area than 18, so you need fewer threads. That looks quite orange on the camera, but that is actually very, very, yeah, that looks really orange there, but it's actually very red. It's pillar box, post box red, post office red. Very, very different colour. They look, the rest of them look, don't look too bad in terms of sort of colour from what I can see to what you guys can see through the camera, but that red was particularly orange on your view. Yeah, these are so good. Oh, yeah, some excellent blues down here. Look, how exciting. Oh, that's a good colour. I do like whoa, that sort of dark turquoise colour. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm really. I'm really looking forward to this one. Quite into my sort of Christmassy, a bit of a Christmas vibe at the moment. Um, so, as you know, from my uh, last couple of videos um, with some unboxings, you'll see um, you'll see in them. Ha have a check back, and you'll see how I how I deal with threads um, and what to do, like cut, cut, cutting the end loops here, and um, being able to sort of take one strand off at a time using these as the actual sort of thread cards for, for the for the use of the project so yeah i won't go into that now do check out my i think i think the main two uh video one and video five i think i talk about it so um in video five um i've got uh in foster five i've got a um i i bring to the video a piece that i'm working on and and a, a kit a, se a section of this that i'm working on with actual sort of sort of um threads left in there so I don't know what I'm trying to say, uh, <laughs> a practical showing of how it looks when you're actually using this and stitching with it. Maybe that's a better, maybe that's a better description that I'm trying to explain. So uh, yeah, and then you get the, the, the couple of sheets there with the information, you get the legend, um, which is of, of course in here, um, and this is the 25 count. Yeah, it's exactly, I think it's, yeah, it looks exactly the same as the one I'm currently um, currently using for my current piece. Uh, it's just, yeah, I don't know, I just liked it. I just liked how, uh, I just like the difference in it really. I don't know how I'll get on um, going forward, but I've gone for it. I've gone for it, and that's all I can do. Oh, I've forgotten how these get boxed up. I think it's like that. Okay, cool. So I'll just pause the video and put this away because it's going to make loads of rustling noise. I'll see you in a sec. Okay, I'm back. I'm slightly crinkled out. So here's the second one. And this came up as an exclusive um, for uh, a sale for a couple of days uh, with a slightly discounted rate. And this is Ringdeer, also by Lorna Lane. <laughs> And uh, I think that she's brilliant. I I think she's brilliant. I've decided to name her Doris. I I just think that she's lovely. So <laughs> this is the one that I've gone for. So I'll take this one out as well. Show you all the bits and pieces inside. It's so noisy. I just remove the crinkles. So turn this one over. Here we are, reindeer. And again, I've gone for 25 count. This is 88 colours here. And just, yeah, really in, the, really in the Christmassy mood at the moment. And another one where I'm stitching sort of outside of the main square, which I, I really like. I really like the effect. Um, I've got a real thing about poinsettias as well. And she's just super Christmassy, so I love it. So here we are. Here's the 25 count and a lot more threads for this one. What's the size difference between these? So this one is 13 by 16 inches and Robin is six by eight inches. So yeah, that's what, so not surprising. Reindeer is double the size-ish. Wow, cool. 
yeah so a lot more look at these colors <laughs> this is so wicked yeah fantastic so i'll just quickly swish through them so you can see these are a lot there's obviously a lot more double the size double the amount um yeah and this is quite a chunky one so on some on more of these i would i would plait them or braid them um as opposed to with the robin there's very small amounts on most of them so i probably wouldn't do anything with them uh these are very bright and through um through the camera they look very bright almost dark very dark orange but they are very red um to me very dark reds so i'm sorry that the camera doesn't do these justice it might be the video i might try and take another picture but i mean no matter what version of color you can see they're brilliant aren't they <laughs> i love them some great look at those and they look just as bright through my camera, uh, th not through the camera. I'm get, starting to get some really good greens here. Fantastic colours. I love the combinations of these. That's quite... They're cool, aren't they? Oh, 88. 88 colours. 88 colours. So no spares uh, at the back end of these. Everything that we need is 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 in this section. I'm just gonna give it a little shake. Here we go, amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, so I do have some needle minders. Uh, the one I'm going to show you, I know I've showed you some of them before. Uh, the one I'm gonna show you is the uh, reindeer one. Oops, and just show you that one here. Oops, where's the camera? Where's the camera? There's the camera there. Oh, sorry about the uh, the shadow. How much will it focus? Yeah, pretty good. So there's, that's what that's what it will look like with the background then, a clear background. So those are the pieces that I have. Very very exciting, very exciting. Um, I also may have purchased today uh, the Gecko Gem, which is like a secret kit that you don't know what it is until it arrives. It's up to you if you want to open it or not. And in the official Facebook group, you you, you sort of um, you have to keep it a secret for a certain amount of time, and then um, they sort of ever, you know you get the you get the go ahead to sh to show everyone what it is. So I did manage to pick one up up today. Um, I haven't previously picked up any of the um, any of the, the secret kits. Uh, well, you just don't know what it is. You don't know the you know the size. You can choose the count, but you don't know the artist, and you don't know. Um, what the design is i think that's quite exciting so um i picked one of those up and yeah just gonna I'll, I'll, obviously i'll show you when the time comes when it's agreed that we can show people uh so i'm just going to pause the video now and just find my current whip hi all okay so i've just picked up my whip to show you where i am uh, and this is the pattern that i'm working on this is also a gecko rouge kit um by designs by sandra vargas it's called alice and I decided to um, work this one on, I think the kit came with 14 count Ada, and I decided to have a go at this one on 25 count. <laughs> Excuse me. So what I've done, I'm just going to turn this one over. What I've done is this. So I know this isn't massively helpful. I'm going to have to just undo all the pins, etc. Uh, so as well, I just wanted to show you how I work. This is probably one of the smallest hoops I've ever worked on. This is an eight inch hoop. Uh, normally I tend to work on sort of a 10 inch hoop and then use a, uh, a lap stand or some sort of um, stand. But actually at the moment, I'm able to hold this with one hand uh, and because it's much smaller, um, the back of my hand, I tend to sort of guide my needle. Um, I saw some uh, questions uh, on um, one of the Facebook groups I'm in where people were saying or oh, how especially I suppose if you're um, sort of reasonably new to the to, to cross stitching then um, or stitching in general then they some people are asking the question how do you know apologies that was my Alexa reminding me to do something um, uh, people were asking how do you uh, know where to put your stitch back in if you're potentially new to the new to the craft and you have to sort of find the hole on the, 
constantly turning your work to find the hole to go back in. So what I tend to do is put um, my hand on the back and then these two fingers tend to be the kind of guiding fingers. So as I'm stitching this bit, I've got my fingers here and um, I stitch with my right hand um, and uh, when I put my needle in, I find it on the back and then I, wherever my finger is, it goes pretty much around there. And I, that's what I use to, to stitch. I hadn't really thought about it or realised what I do. So using a smaller hoop is really good. I suppose um, on my cat's, uh, my love piece, which is one of my other whips, um, I'm using a much bigger hoop and I do struggle to reach across to get to it. So actually, I think my new favourite thing is smaller hoop. Helpful. Um, and then also, as I'm now working on 25 count, there's a lot less excess fabric, which um, I've... This is this is how I this is how I do my, mine. Some people like it hanging down. Some people just don't don't hook it round. Or some people have um, hoop covers. Or if you're working on a Q snap, they might have a Q snap cover, and then they can tuck all their excess fabric in. Um, I don't use any sort of holder or anything. So this is this is how this is how I this is how I work. So I've got these sort of spool thread hugger plastic squidgy things. Um, they're not particularly holding it in, but they just keep it from unravelling, I suppose. Um, they're not really keeping it in place, but it just stops it unravelling and getting worse. So I've got uh, one those sides, I can take them off. Probably should have probably should have done this in advance to show you where I am. So I've got some two little needle minders on here. I think they're really cute. Um, and they're from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. I'll put the link down below, but they're really handy. And what I tend to do is leave one on my piece, and when I'm stitching, um, when I'm stitching at a desk or a table, I will have my other one there so that um, when I finish off when I finish off uh, a particular thread, if I've got it sort of turned around to, to cut the thread here, I don't want to have to turn it back over, put the needle on and so I just have a spare needle minder down here um, to just ping ping it across onto there and that's just how I it's just how I work now. I just have two. It's because I have so many needle minders. <laughs> I've bought so many of them. Uh, so in here I've got some pins. Oh, there you go. Now I wouldn't suggest pinning unless you're sort of really careful with how you pin. You don't want to pin something and have the fabric move and then you leave massive holes. That has left a bit of a hole just there, but it can really easily and quickly be sort of um, put back into place and that, you know, you'd never know that there was a pin there. So I would say if you do this, be careful because you could stretch some of the fabric. So this is, anyway, this is it. This is how I, this is how I have my, this is how I have my piece and I've got my hoop. Uh, and this is the current, this is the current whip. So I started this one about three weeks ago and I've literally stitched on it every single night. This is tent stitch, um, 25 count, two over one tent. So that is two strands of the thread in each one really tiny small hole. So I'm just going to try and bring this up. I don't know whether this will focus well enough, but I'm going to keep trying. And I know that there's a bit of a shadow. So I might just turn the camera up a little bit. Right, so I've moved the camera. Now let's see if this actually focuses in. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. there you go, that's not too bad. So these are quite good here to see. So that's two threads, just half a stitch diagonal across one tiny, tiny little square. And uh, you can see these bits here. They fill up really quickly, really quickly. Obviously, you're only doing half, half the stitch. It's wonderful. At first, it was a bit weird. I've never done it before. So um, it was a bit strange. Uh, I f on, 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 and on a few of them, I actually went back and did the other, you know, the other leg of the cross and then realised I was cross-stitching and had to, had to, <laughs> had to stop. Um, so yeah, it's pretty, it's quite thin in comparison to sort of the 18 count that I've been working on. This bit's quite thin. It feels lovely. It's tiny, tiny stitches. Um, and I felt really bad, you see, leaving her eye like this. I felt awful. So what I decided to do was um, continue with this one. I mean, what I'd been doing before was getting, I don't know, a couple of percent because I use Pattern Keeper, um, so I've been getting sort of a couple of percent um, into each whip and then rotating, and then 
with this one, I just, because it stitches so quickly, this is the whole of the first row, and this is four pages. I think this is a partial three-quarter page. It's been so quick, so quick that I've been able to do this. I just thought, actually, if I just worked on this um, for sort of another month, I'd probably be done. Uh, I don't intend to do the whole thing um, without going back to one of my other whips first, but... Um, I'm doing quite well on it. <laughs> I just love it. There's a couple of reasons. One, I want to know how it looks when it's finished. I want to know whether stitching intent, you lose any detail uh, that you may have if you were doing a full cross. Um, I want to see what 25 count looks like when it's finished for me. I want to wash the fabric because uh, even if I thought oh, I won't wash the fabric I'll just leave it actually because her face is so light you can see the grid lines through her face here so I am going to uh, to wash wash this to get rid of the grid lines so there's a few reasons and you know I wanted to I wanted to finish a 25 count kit so that I can make the decision going forward that 25 is actually perhaps the new thing for me and I know I've just bought the two kits that you would have seen in 25 count but um there that I'm I'm, hap I'm happy with that and I was happy happy to go for it it's the ones where I'm probably where I'm kitting them up myself um they can be you know if you're on 18 count they're very expensive the fabric's obviously much bigger and so it's another expense and the time spent so I've got a couple of um a couple of patterns from uh heaven and earth designs and tilt and craft in fact because and they are huge they're sort of you know 600 stitches 900 stitches across or up and i just i want to know what whether i can do 25 count on them and i haven't done that before so i've stuck with this piece and literally what day is today today is day 21 so exactly three weeks ago i started this one um and it's just a joy to stitch, if I'm honest. It's really cool. Uh, and I've, so I felt bad that I've left her eye like that. And so that's one of the reasons why I just thought, actually, if I at least get this section done, then she'll have proper eyeballs, because that's that looks really bad. Um, and the way that I tend to stitch is uh, page by page. I do cross country, but I don't do cross country um, in perhaps the traditional sense. So I, for instance... I, for instance, will, um, so say I pick, uh, say I pick here, so I probably should have left this one in a hoop. So say I pick this, um, this top left blank stitch there to stitch, I will find the colour and I will probably do all of this and I'll probably do 20, a 20 by 20 block, um, not travelling very far, not carrying my thread very far and I'll just work till I run out of the colour. And then I'll probably start on the second one. But if I can see a big chunk of a colour here, I'll just stitch that because it fills in more of a gap and then I sort of work around it. Like I have done here, a lot of this little gap here is, is quite a lot of confetti. So I saw this big chunk here in one colour and I thought, well, I'll just, I'll just do that. So I just cuddle it in all this green section and then I'll go back and fill in all these small bits. So I don't do a whole page in one thread. I'll just get to the end of the thread and start a new one and... Um, just finish off a little section and I will want to so this is one page down to exactly this line here and what I don't like to do is leave an absolute uh, line across so here I don't like to do that <laughs> I know I've done it <laughs> but the reason why I've done that is because this is where four pages meet and that's really hard if you're working on paper, as I am, uh, with a paper chart, not on Pattern Keeper. That's really hard to manipulate. And I did it before on one of my pieces a while ago where I masking, I used masking tape to mask, mask, masking tape to stick all four pages together so I could work on this tiny bit in, in the middle of all four pages. And it was a nightmare. It was really hard. And... I just thought, no, can't can't be dealing with that. So I appreciate I've left this in a line, and I will show. I'll try and dig out a really old piece um, that I've worked on, where it was one of my first ever pieces, and I stitched everything in ten by ten blocks, and it meant that I had really deep lines. I was probably really like a really tight stitcher as well when I was first starting, like not very consistent, 
probably pulled the threads too tight. Um, and so I just had these huge lines going all the way across my finished piece, these huge grooves all the way across. And it was such a shame. I spent hours on this piece, especially when I was new. And then to suddenly you get the finished piece and you've just got these awful 10 by 10 grid lines. It was so disappointing. So I just decided not to do that again. But so what? So I know I've done it there, but ignore that bit. So what I tend to do is I make sure that I go down a bit onto the next page. And that's what I've done across here. So this is where the, obviously, this is this here is exactly where the line is for the page. And what I do to try and mitigate that, to try and stop these really tight um, indent lines when in the finished piece, is to go down a bit. And because I've gone down here in the eye, here a little bit, and in this section, I thought, actually, it probably won't show very much in these sections. The reason why I've left this dark grey section right at the end, right at the end, is because I would stitch that length in one colour and go back and forth, back and forth. And so it would be no different if I just carried on stitching. At some point, I'm going to create a line and it's not going to look any different when I go down because I would have stitched just the one line on its own anyway. So my next bit will just be stitching the line below. So it doesn't matter for where it's block colour and that's why I'm happy to leave it down here as sort of this sort of section here. Um, I appreciate though that this, and this is absolute confetti, really, really tough stitching this hair because there are so many colors in there. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the term confetti, it just means there's an awful lot of different colors in a 10 by 10 block. Um, this is a good block color. However, in something like this, each one of these is probably a different colour. So you're probably stitching one or two stitches in one colour and, and, and stopping. And so the back of my piece, now I would never... <laughs> I'm not one of those people that really cares about the back of my piece because no one's going to see it. As long as it's not too horrendously bulky, it's fine. But this is the back of my piece. And you can see here, this whole background is probably three or four colours. It was brilliant to start on. I was flying. Uh, see if I can focus. Yeah, so you can see here where there's no pieces on the back. This is just purely stitching the back, the back side of the, the back side of the stitches. Whereas in comparison to the hair and also to the face, you can see the these tiny, tiny um, vertical stitches here. That's the face as well. And so in this section, then completely different story. Much, much thicker back. Um, so I, because I'm working on two pieces, I start with the loop start, so I don't have a tail at the beginning. And if I finish, I tend to, uh, I used to use knots when I was sort of, many years ago, I used to, I used to knot. Um, and then it never affected my, the framing of any of the work that I'd done, but it, it, it wasn't brilliant. Um, so what I tend to do is just run the thread under, I don't know, three or four stitches. And then I turn 90 degrees and run it three or four stitches that way as well. So I make sure, so for instance, here's probably... I don't know if you can see this, it might be too bright. This one here, this would have been me finishing here perhaps, and I've gone under some stitches here, turned it 90 degrees and just gone under some stitches there and then cut off. And that's what I do, that just makes sure nothing nothing comes out. I know I could pin stitch, um, but when you're working on a, when you're working on a confetti piece, oops, and there's nowhere, everything around you is already stitched, you can't pin stitch and I don't want to travel down to here to do a pin stitch or here to finish. I'd rather just put it underneath. So I try to tend, I tend to try to keep my colours the same. So if I'm finishing a colour in a yellow section, I have tried to keep the backs, um, the, the, the end tail threads in the yellow section. As Obviously, I've gone over a little bit here um, to end the threads. I don't like to put the dark colors into the light section and the light section because just in case you can see it through in the background you probably can't um obviously over here i've gone a bit wild and just done whatever i wanted but i don't tend to pay, pay much attention because it won't show it won't show through it's not going for a competition it's fine as it is um so yeah so i can see it looks really good i <laughs> in my humble opinion I think it looks quite good through the camera um and it does look a bit paler from my view next to the camera so I just wanted to show you the coverage as well um so uh, 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 waiting for it to focus I'm really sorry so I think it's pretty good in the gray sections the dark sections 
So what I'm finding is that the stitches tend to split a bit and you can sort of see these slight white, uh, you can see the fabric fabric through the through the stitches. So on some sections, I'm railroading my stitches. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the term railroading, it's when you're um, about to create the stitch, so you're going back down after you've, you've already come up and you've got the thread on the top and then you're going back down into the fabric to create your stitch and it's when you use your needle to put in between the two threads in order for them to lay separately and flat next to each other. This, uh, I didn't do any railroading, I just stitched as per normal. Um, I haven't yet... <sighs> Uh, I've got a couple of pieces that I need to frame and I haven't yet washed them so I don't actually know what pieces look like when they are washed. Um, my understanding is that they sort of fluff up a bit um, and sort of cover the gaps so I'm hoping that that will happen. Um, that's certainly the plan, that's what I would like, that's what I would like to see. So yeah, I mean, from far away, you wouldn't see it anyway. From a couple of feet away, you wouldn't see it. It's only that us as stitchers, we tend to be a bit more critical of our work, don't we? And we tend to think, oh, there's a gap, there's a gap. Um, and we tend to sort of look at it a bit more than we perhaps would if we were somebody else or if it was on a wall and framed. Would I look that close? No, I wouldn't. I would just say hi to Alice as I walked past her and that was it. So probably being quite critical but I just wanted to show you where I was with this current whip and uh, and I wanted to show you how I'm getting on with my tent stitch I will ask you guys what do you think please can you let me know please comment below please let me know what you think about this if you think that the 25 count is is all right if you think I know you don't you haven't seen my other works to sort of compare but if you think it looks okay um if you think that tent stitch is working uh, it's tricky because you haven't. So, there's no finished piece to compare it against. Um, but I would very much welcome any sort of feedback that you guys um, think about this because I really, I'm really liking it, but I'm not sure how to compare. And again, in terms of sort of detail or any loss of detail, there's so much. The I think the majority of things that I've seen where people are saying there isn't a loss of detail, uh, and then you get the odd, the odd sort of comment where somebody says. Not, not about this piece, but just in general about tent, where somebody says, oh, actually, I did that. I didn't like it because there's a loss of detail. Does it matter if it's... The loss of detail would be much less the bigger the piece. Um, like if you're on a heaven and earth design and you've got 900 stitches across, then any sort of tent's going to be fine with that, isn't it? Because it's just going to have huge, huge amount of stitches in it. I don't know. Let me know. Please let me know what you think. So yeah, okay, I'm going to head off now. Uh, I thought you'd enjoy. Um, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, uh, please subscribe, please comment. Um, please let me know how you, uh, what you think. Uh, follow me on Instagram if you wish, uh, Belushi Stitches, and I have sort of daily updates of, of how I'm getting on with everything uh, and a few other bits and pieces. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask, please let me know, and uh, see you at the next one. Thank you, bye.